Hi, I'm Jonathan, and I'm going to be reading from Kristen Butcher's Isabel Stanley Cup. Not only did she write it, but she also illustrated it. Now, I'm just having a look at the cover here, and uh, a few things I notice. On the cover, there's uh, a young man and woman. They're dressed in sweaters and toques. They have skates on and hockey sticks. Looks like they're playing hockey, so I imagine that's what this book might be about. But when I look in the background, I can see there's a lot of people watching. And when I look closely, I can see they're not dressed like people I usually see out on the street. They look a little bit different. Very um, old-timey. It makes me wonder when this book was set. And as I have a look at the back cover here, it says that this book takes place in 1893. That is 127 years ago. That's a long time. I didn't even know they had hockey way back then. I wonder what life was like. If it was different than the way it is now, what things were the same? Well, let's find out. Isabel Stanley Cup by Kristen Butcher. Chapter 1. Papa Says No. Isabel circled the dining table, banging down knives and forks and throwing napkins onto the plates. She could hear her brothers in the other room. She could smell them, too. Well, not them, exactly, but she could smell the fresh winter air they had brought indoors after their snowball fight. She had watched them through the window as she dusted the sitting room. It looked like such fun. She had wanted to play, too, but according to Papa, throwing snowballs wasn't a suitable activity for a young lady. Neither was hockey, and Isabel wanted to do that more than anything. She hated having to be a young lady. It was boring. Boys had all the fun. Isabel might have been happier if she'd had a sister to do things with, but she didn't and all she had were five brothers. To make matters worse, they were all older. She sighed. All she ever got to do was help her mother with chores. It was so unfair. She didn't want to embroider pillow slips and fold laundry. She wanted to play hockey with her brothers. As she put out the water glasses, she made up her mind. She would ask Papa one more time. Isabel glared at the newspaper, hiding her father's face. It's not fair, she pouted. Mama shook her head in warning, and Isabel's brothers stopped eating. Their eyes bugged out as they stared at their little sister. No one ever spoke back to Papa. Papa lowered his Ottawa citizen and put it down beside his plate. Then he took off his spectacles and laid them down, too. He frowned at Isabel. The world is not always fair, Isabel. You will find that out soon enough. But this is not about fairness. It's about what is proper. Some activities are meant for boys and some for girls. It's as simple as that. Hockey is a boys game. It's not suitable for young ladies. Why not? Isabel demanded. I can skate as good as Billy and Matt. As well as Billy and Matt, her mother corrected her. Isabel heaved a frustrated sigh. As well as Billy and Matt. So why shouldn't I be allowed to play? You might get hurt, her father said. Hockey is a rough sport. I'm not going to break, Papa. I'm fit and strong. Just yesterday, I beat Billy at arm wrestling. I let you win, Billy blustered. You did not, Isabel retorted. I beat you fair and square, Billy Harkness. Children, stop, Mama said. There will be no squabbling at the dinner table. And there will be no more arm wrestling either, Isabel, Papa added. He sent his daughter a look that meant the subject was closed. Then he turned to his wife. It is obvious that Isabel is spending too much time with her brothers. Is there not something else she could do? Read poetry, paint, 
take singing lessons, perhaps. The mere thought made Isabel shudder. Isabel Stanley plays hockey. She flung the words at her father like a dare. I saw her picture in the newspaper. She plays with other young women on the rink at Rideau Hall. If the Governor General's daughter can play hockey, why can't I? Isabel, that is quite enough, Mama scolded her. Papa cleared his throat and picked up his knife and fork. Listen to your mother, child. How Lord Stanley runs his family is his business. It has nothing to do with how I run mine. You may continue to skate, but there will be no more talk of hockey. Is that clear? Isabel scowled. It was clear, all right, but she didn't have to like it. Chapter 2. Hockey Lessons The ice rink was a flooded field on Ossington Avenue. Isabel's brothers and the other boys who lived on the street thought of it as their personal property. But anyone could skate there, even girls. Isabel glided around the edges of the ice. She was careful to stay out of the way of the boys who were practicing for a game that afternoon. They would be playing the Seneca Street team. Most of those boys were older and bigger. Isabel wasn't willing to admit they were better, though. Her brothers were all very good players. Alexander, who was 14 and the oldest, had a fierce shot. The twins, Freddie and John, were 13 and could skate like the wind. Matt, at 11, won almost every face-off. And Billy, who was 10, only a year older than Isabel, and not even an inch taller, could stick handle around players as if they were standing still. The other boys on their team, Jamie, Robert, and Simon, were good too. Even so, the Ossington team had never beaten the Seneca boys. When the Seneca team arrived, Isabel's brothers and their teammates left the ice so the other boys could warm up before the game. Back away, Isabel, Alexander said, and keep your eyes open. You don't want to get hit by the puck. Look out, she yelled. A hockey stick was zinging straight for his head. She dove at him, sending them both sprawling. The stick shot harmlessly into a snowbank. You're the one who should keep your eyes open, Isabel told her brother. Sorry about that, a big boy on the other team waved and shrugged. The stick slipped out of my hands. I don't think he's sorry at all, Isabel grumbled. I think he did that on purpose. It was a close game. The Ossington Avenue boys played better than they ever had before. With just a few minutes left, they were winning 3-2. Excited and hopeful, Isabel cheered loudly from the sidelines. If she had any voice left when the game was over, it would be a miracle. Come on, Ossington, she shouted. You can do it! Someone shot the puck across the ice. The boy, who had nearly taken Alexander's head off earlier, was chasing it. Suddenly, he slipped, and down he went. His stick flew out of his hands, and he slid into a snowbank. He was so close to Isabel, she could have touched him. She knew she should keep back, but she was caught up in the excitement of the game and couldn't help herself. She leaned over the snowbank. How do you expect to win if you can't skate? she teased. Want me to teach you? The boy's eyes became angry slits, and his nostrils flared in and out. It was not a friendly face. Isabel stepped back. Hurry, Harry, get the puck, one of the Seneca players called. This game isn't over, little girl, the boy named Harry growled. We'll see what a smarty pants you are when your team loses. Then he pushes himself up, retrieved his stick, and skated away with the puck. Freddy was waiting for him. But when Freddy tried to take the puck away, Harry hit him hard on the shin with his stick. Isabel gasped as Freddy sank to the ice, holding his leg and groaning. It was John's turn to chase Harry. He would have had him, too, if a player on the other team hadn't tripped John from behind. Hey! Isabel cried. That's not fair! But nobody heard her over all the cheering. The Seneca boys had scored. The game was tied. With time running out, the teams quickly lined up for the faceoff. Matt won it and passed the puck to Billy. Right away, Billy was zigzagging around the players, and then, bam, 
somebody elbowed him in the face so hard it knocked him on his back. Before Isabel had time to blink, the Seneca team stole the puck and scored. The boy keeping time whistled. The game was over. They shouldn't have won, Isabel protested after the other team left. Alexander shrugged. We'll get them next time. How? They'll just cheat again. Her brother pinched her cheek and grinned. We'll get tougher and trickier. We'll outsmart them, right, boys? Right, they all cheered. You can help, Isabel, Alexander said. Me? What can I do? When we practice, you can pretend you're the other team. Do every dirty trick you can think of, and we'll figure out how to outsmart you. But Papa said I'm not allowed to play hockey. You won't be playing, Alexander said. Not really. It's more like you'll be coaching. Papa didn't say anything about that, he winked. Isabel winked back and grinned. No, he didn't. The team practiced every day, and Isabel practiced with them. It took a while for her to get used to skating with a stick, but soon it felt like part of her body. She didn't like the idea of hooking the boys or tripping them, but Alexander was right. It did help them improve their play. Isabel had to work harder and harder to catch them. Though she didn't realize it, Isabel was also improving. Her legs got stronger. Her skating got faster. When she got the puck, it was harder for the boys to steal it back. Soon, Isabel could weave through the players almost as well as Billy. Let's see what you can do with teammates, Isabel, Alexander said one day. He divided the players, including Isabel, into two sides. Now we'll see if you can pass and shoot. After that, Isabel played at every practice, and she got better and better. The boys noticed. You know, Isabel, Billy said as they walked home from practice one day, for somebody who doesn't play hockey, you're pretty good. And that is the end of chapter two. We'll pick this up in our next video. Until then, stay cozy.